Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we're operating off of the USS Theodore Roosevelt CBN-71 and we'll be going over how to taxi and take off from an aircraft carrier in the FA-18C in DCS world. For today's video we'll be using the deck crew from the Supercarrier DLC and we'll be looking at how we work with the deck crew to get ourselves hooked up to the catapult and launched off the deck. Topics we'll be covering today are the Jersey color system used on US aircraft carriers as well as by various navies throughout NATO, just so that we know who's who in the zoo as we taxi around the flight deck. And then we'll be touching on the hand signals we'll be looking for from our plane directors and from our catapult officer. And then we'll close out the video with a quick walkthrough talk through where we'll actually taxi, hook up to the catapult and launch off the carrier. So jumping right into it, let's talk about who we'll be looking at by going over what the various deck crew jersey colors actually mean. So carrier deck crews wear various colors of jersey depending on what their job is. And the primary ones that we'll be working with today are the yellow shirts, the green shirts, white shirts, and one brown shirt. The yellow shirts are made up of aircraft handling officers, catapult officers, also known as shooters, arresting gear officers, and plane directors. We'll mostly be watching various plane directors while we taxi, and then we'll be watching our catapult officer when we actually go to launch. Just to differentiate between the two because they're both yellow shirts, note that the plane directors wear a yellow jersey with a yellow helmet, while the shooter wears a yellow jersey with a green helmet. Next are the green shirts, and they make up the catapult crews, the arresting gear crews, the air wing maintenance personnel, as well as a variety of other tasks. The green shirts that we'll be working with today are part of the catapult crew, and there'll be two of them. One will be responsible for installing the holdback bar, and the other will verify that the launch bar is properly seated in the catapult shuttle, and that tension is properly applied. Next are the white shirts, and they are made up of air wing quality control personnel, plane inspectors, landing signal officers, air transfer officers, safety observers, and medical personnel. When we go to take off, these will be the guys who verify that our stabilators and other control services are properly functioning, before giving a thumbs up to the catapult officer that everything's working properly and that our aircraft is good to be launched. The last color we'll be working with today are the brown shirts and that will be our plane captain. So he's responsible for preparing and inspecting the aircraft prior to takeoff and they'll be the first person we signal to both when we're ready to start up and when we're ready to begin taxiing. The other role for a brown shirt is as a line leading petty officer but these aren't really implemented in DCS. The rest of the deck crew also isn't really functional in DCS, but we'll go over them as well just so that we know what everyone would be doing. And the first guys we'll talk about are the red shirts. These guys are responsible for handling ordnance, so they'd be the guys who actually mount all of the missiles and bombs onto our aircraft and load the gun. And they'll also make up the crash and salvage crews, and they're also responsible for any ordnance disposal whenever that role needs to be filled. Next are the blue jerseys, and these are made up of plane handlers, not to be confused with the yellow shirt plane directors. And they also operate the aircraft elevators, they operate the tractors, and they are messengers and phone talkers. Last color is the purple jersey, and these guys are responsible for fueling aircraft and for operating fueling stations, and they are affectionately referred to as grapes. Alright, now moving on to hand signals. There are several hand signals that we need to know in order to work effectively with the deck crew, and the first hand signals we'll go over are those that are used for marshalling. So when our director wants us to taxi forward, they will move both of their hands above their head and then wave both their hands back and forth simultaneously. If they want us to turn left or right, they'll indicate which direction to turn by pointing their arm in the required direction and then continue to wave their other hand to tell us to continue moving in the indicated direction. When our director needs us to stop, they'll stop waving their arms, put both arms above their head and form closed fists with both hands. Now it takes multiple plane directors to marshal an aircraft on the flight deck, and when we're transferred between directors, they'll indicate which director to look at next by pointing both arms at our next director and passing us over to them. Our last plane director will be located on the catapult itself, and they'll use all of the marshaling signals I just talked about, along with a couple of others. When we line up with the catapult, they'll give us the signal to spread and lock our wings by bringing both arms to the center of their chest, and then spreading both arms laterally at the same time. Once the remainder of the catapult crew is in place, they'll signal us to drop the launch bar by touching their elbow with one hand, with the other hand vertical, and then lower their hand to signal lowering the launch bar. The signal to raise the launch bar is the same thing, just in reverse, starting with their hand extended, and then raising their arm by bending the elbow to signal raising the launch bar. Once the aircraft is all hooked up with the holdback bar attached, the shooter will give the signal for us to run up the engines by raising one arm above their head, and rapidly moving their hand in a circular motion. 
Now note that in DCS, you need to throttle up to mill power or be an afterburner for the shooter to actually consider the engines to be ran up. And then the last thing we'll be looking for is after we give a salute to the shooter, indicating that we're ready to be launched, he'll return the salute, do his final checks, verify the safety of and thumbs up from the rest of the catapult crew, then kneel and touch the deck, and point forward to signal the catapult operator to launch the catapult. All right, with all that explaining done, let's go ahead and do this live. Now we're starting in a fully fired up Hornet, but there are a couple more things we need to do before we taxi, starting with setting our takeoff trim. So the F-18 is going to require different levels of stabilator trim when taking off from a carrier based on the gross weight of the aircraft. If we're at 44,000 pounds and below, we'll need to set our stabilator trim to 16 degrees nose up. If we're between 45 and 48,000 pounds, then we'll need to set it to 17 degrees. And if we're at 49,000 pounds or above, we'll need to set it to 19 degrees. We can find our aircraft weight by navigating to the support page on one of our DDIs, then selecting checklist, and then checking the ACWT or aircraft weight. Now we've got a completely clean aircraft today, so we're coming in at an extremely light 36,500 pounds, so we'll only require 16 degrees of stabilator trim. To set the stabilator trim, we'll pull up the FCS page, and then using the trimmer switch, we'll set our stabilator trim. Default keybinds for this are right control plus period to increase and right control plus semicolon to decrease, although I'd recommend setting an additional keybind on your HOTAS if you have one. And now we'll just look in on our stabilator trim as we increase it to 60 degrees. There we go. Now just a couple of checks before we start moving, we'll just verify that our anti-skid is set to off and that our flaps are set to half. And we'll set our nose wheel steering to high by pressing the undesignate nose wheel steering switch. The default keybind for this is S, but again, I'd recommend setting an additional keybind for this on your HOTAS. Now, because our wings are folded, nose wheel steering will automatically stay in high, but when we spread the wings, we'll need to hold the undesignate nose wheel steer switch if we want to keep our nose wheel steering in high. All right, we're ready to get rolling, so the first thing we'll do is give a salute to the plane captain to signal to him that we're ready to move. The default keybind for this is left alt plus left control plus left shift plus S. Alternatively, you can use the communications menu by pressing backslash, then F8 to select ground crew, then F6 to salute. Once he acknowledges, he'll hand us off to our first plane director, and we'll make our way through these directors until we get to our last one at the catapult. Alright, so looking at our first director here, he's telling us to move forward, so we'll go ahead and throttle up. Now he's telling us to move right, so we'll bring it over to the right, a little bit forward, back to the right, keep going right, hands us off to our next director. This director tells us keep going right, keep going right, hands us off to the next guy. Looking at him now, more to the right, and straighten out. And just peek around the bar here. There we go, hands us off. Now we see this director tells us spread our wings, so we will spread and lock the wings. And keeps telling us to bring it over to the right and straighten out. Now we know better than the AI does, so we'll just bring it a little bit further off to the right here before we center off. Good. And we'll just keep creeping forward until he tells us to stop. There we go, telling us to stop, foot on the brake. At this point, we see the white shirts going behind the aircraft and the green shirts getting underneath of us. Looking back up at the director, he tells us to extend the launch bar, so we'll go ahead and drop that. Looking in the external view here, we'll see the green shirt hooking up the holdback bar. And the director tells us to bring it forward, so we'll bring it forward to get us hooked up to the catapult shuttle. It'll take a little bit more throttle than you think it will. And once we come forward of the shuttle, he'll tell us to stop. There we go, green shirt tells the catapult operator to apply tension. Under tension now, so we'll go ahead and raise the launch bar. All 
All right, now the shooter's telling us to run up the engine, so we'll go ahead and bring ourselves up to mill power, not into afterburner. Now at this point, we're just gonna wipe our control surfaces by doing a bunch of max inputs into the stick and into the rudder pedals. And once we're done that, take a look back at the FCS page, make sure we kept our 16 degrees nose up stab trim. All right, everything's looking good. We'll go ahead and shoot a salute to the shooter. He returns the salute, starts doing his checks. We're gonna go ahead and put our heads straight back in the seat here, looking forward and just waiting to launch. There we go. All right, airborne now. We'll go ahead and raise the landing gear and set our flaps to auto. And we have successfully taken off from a carrier. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed very much. And I hope that you guys learned something along the way. Before we go, just make sure to like and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Fly safe.